I want to shift the conversation a little bit and talk a little bit more about scaffolding and especially that uh, Russian is not a language that uses the Roman alphabet. We might often need to resort to scaffolding to make especially those authentic materials something that our students can really use and, and sink their teeth into. So to start off, uh, Shannon, we'll start with you. How do you work with scaffolding whenever you are um, teaching students reading and writing? What kinds of things do you do with scaffolding? Well, similar to what I said on Monday, this is an area where I think online materials really, really are um, so helpful because there are so many ways to embed uh, support uh, for whatever whatever support is potentially needed, but with without kind of inconveniencing everyone who may not need that. And so um, one of my favorite tools that I use for so many things um, is called H5P. You can find it in a variety of places. Um, you can find it at h5p.org or h5p.com. There's also a really great website called Anvil, which is anvil, A-N-V-I-L-L -L, dot U Oregon dot edu, where you can access H5P for free. Um, it's one of my favorite tools for a lot of reasons, but one of the uh, reasons for that is because it allows so many different ways to embed different types of support and scaffolding and help. Um, so I've used it in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, I can give a couple of examples. Um, one is that, uh, uh, for example, when my students um, very, very early in semester one, when my students are still learning the alphabet, um, they, I use uh, one of the episodes of Masha y Medved, uh, Masha and the Bear, which you're probably familiar with. Um, where it's the episode where she goes to school. And um, if you watch the video, then you know, you may notice that at the very beginning of the video, the bear is, is uh, watching the news. And you can overhear the news as you start watching the video. And in the news, if you're paying attention to it and understand it, it's telling you that it's the 1st of September, which of course uh, tells us that it's the first day of school. Um, and so that sort of, that context prepares you for what's coming next. And uh, the H5P interactive video tool allows you to have um, support like that just pop up on the screen without kind of interrupting the flow of what you're watching. So that if you're a, a you know level one Russian student and you don't know that and you can't understand what they're saying on the news, you can still get that support that you need. Um, another example that's kind of on a higher level is um, I want to give example an example from another project that I've been working on, which is called the Rails Project. Um, Russian Advanced Interactive Listening Series. Um, this was a series that was, um, it was uh, led by Benjamin Rifkin back in the early 2000s. And it, it's uh, for uh, um, more advanced uh, learners of Russian, probably intermediate high or so, maybe even advanced. Um, and it uses documentary films and interviews with experts, Russian experts uh, on a variety of topics. And uh, the way that I use, I use the same tool that's called the H5P interactive video. I use that same tool for this uh, project. And what we do is we have a video, it's divided into clips. And then there are, for each clip, there are a set of buttons that appear on the left side of the screen. And there's a whole bunch of different types of help, like it has guided questions, keywords, it has a glossary, it has um, what we call periscas, which is like kind of a summary of the clip, but in simpler language. Um, it also has uh, cultural notes, grammatical notes, and it has a uh, transcript and translation. And so all of these buttons show up on the left so that a person who is listening to it can then uh, click those in order to get help when they need it. But if a person is maybe a higher level and they don't need it, they can just go through and watch the video without using the help. And so I think our online tools are so adept at offering us ways to 
give support. And I know I was talking about listening rather than reading, but there are very similar uh, similar things available for for reading as well. And so I think um, some of these tools are very equipped to give us good, really great ways to support students. Another thing I really like about this same tool, H5P, is that it gives a lot of ways to provide targeted feedback. So I think a lot of us as Russian teachers, uh, we are pretty, we're pretty good at guessing uh, what is going to be difficult for our students and or we have experience that tells us what's going to be difficult. And so if we have a question, for example, in one of these activities, and we give a distractor that we know is going to be pretty tempting for students for one reason or another, then uh, H5P gives a lot of opportunities for us to give feedback for every possible answer. It's not only like good job or or not correct. It's also if you choose this particular answer, I can give you feedback to help you understand why your answer was incorrect, for example. Um, and so that's another reason why I really like this tool. It also has uh, the capability. So this offers us ways to differentiate in a way. And it, it also gives us the capability to have at least a little bit of rudimentary adaptivity in that, for example, you can have students in your interactive video, you can have students um, do an activity. And if they get everything correct, they can skip to a different part in the video so that if someone needs more help, then they can keep going. But if they already have mastered that uh, particular thing, then they can skip over it. So it allows us the uh, ability to somewhat differentiate and give a little bit of adaptivity to our, our online materials. Yeah, it almost sounds like a little bit of a different differentiation to your own adventure there, really letting the students pick what do you need help with and then being able to provide that. So I just I love hearing about this. Thank you. Yeah. And you I, can I, also yeah, do cool. something. You can also do something like a choose your own adventure. That's another way that you can use that same tool. I love it. Thank you. Excellent. And then Heather, same question, talking about scaffolding. How do you work with scaffolding whenever you're teaching students things like reading and writing? Um, so my response to this, um, and I think this is a really, really good question. Um, I haven't used H5P in my classes. I'm, I'm familiar with it um, and I've seen it and I think it's a really great tool. Um, we, all of our classes um, are built directly into Canvas, the Canvas LMS, and a lot of the same tools are available. So Shannon was just mentioning um, this this feedback feature. Uh, Canvas also provides, which I really like to use. You know, so if a student does get something wrong, I'm able to like for each each answer, whether it's it's correct or incorrect, give them some sort of feedback. Um, just wanted to make a statement about uh, that. Um, but as far as regards reading and scaffolding. Um, what I really like to do, especially in the lower level classes, is to, you know, one, I want to keep things real. I want to use um, authentic materials and authentic texts right away for students, but I want to um, combine it with uh, the familiar, you know, so I, I rely on a lot of um, familiar, familiarity for uh, scaffolding. So we're online. I make use of a lot of websites. Um, one thing, and this, and this is usually really early on. Uh, so McDonald's is no longer in existence in Russia, but it's been um, uh, transformed into another restaurant called uh, Um And I think that's the name of it. Uh, so I might take my students to a website like this. Um, and just the layout itself, is familiar. Students know just by the, they've seen sites like this in English. They understand, you know, based on pictures, what they're looking at. Um, so I rely on the familiar to kind of um, boost students uh, into being able to read in Russian. So we might explore uh, a site like Gusni Tochkap um, for a while. I, I, I can't show this site right now, but um, 
across the top, you know, there's a menu and one of the um, categories, one of the menus is, uh, uh, one of the categories on the menu is novinka. And I direct my students' attention to this word novinka. And I say, let's, let's look at this word. What, what is familiar in this particular word? You know, and the students actually have to have some degree of Russian at this point. And they're able to say, no boy, you know, this, this has something to do with something new, like new items. Um, there are a lot of cognates on these sites. Uh, so I think, yeah, in short, I rely on like really mining and using a familiar layout. Social media is another. Um, I direct my students to, um, I can no longer require students use social media like I used to be able to do 15 years ago. Um, now we just can explore it. But I can point my students to Kontaktia, the uh, Russian kind of equivalent of Facebook. And just looking at the homepage, it's it's a very familiar layout. And I'm sure a lot of um, teachers here are, you know, would agree and maybe even use this. You know, the familiar um, layout to the students, they they already know what something is just by the layout itself, um, just by the icons that are, you know, used both in uh, the English language version and the, the Russian language version of these sites. Like, for example, the search bar, I can ask them, so how, where would you go to search? Well, they know by looking at the website and seeing the um, the magnifying glass that that word, their voice must mean search or you know, I can I can ask them, well, where do you think, you know, login is or password? And so just undergirding everything with the familiar, um, but with authentic materials uh, is especially um, a powerful tool for uh, for reading at first um, and for, for scaffolding. Excellent. I like the idea of bringing in things that are familiar, even the layouts and the formats, just to kind of put students at ease. And they might be a little, little bit more willing to really dig in and, mm -hmm. and look at some of these vocabulary words and make some connections in their own way. Excellent. Thank you. And staying on the topic of scaffolding, um, 